I'm gonna run And nothing's gonna stop me now No hurdles gonna bring me down Cause I am going I'm going from the crowd I'm going from the yeah. crowd yeah. I'm going from the crowd Oh ready church we got to be ready in the name of Jesus hallelujah amen now we know that it's fifth Sunday and we know that many times before COVID we would turn around and and kind of skip service on fifth Sunday and go to somebody else take time to to um, visit some other churches but we I'm just so grateful that you all are here I'm so grateful that God sent you home today, amen? And I'm so grateful that both deacon and pastor has come back, amen, on their duties today. Amen, to God be the glory. God is a good God, y'all. He makes no mistake, and this is the day that the Lord has made, amen? On this fifth Sunday in October, how many of y'all know that it's, the year is running out? that we've been through something, amen? It's been a long 18, almost 24 months since COVID was first announced and acknowledged, because y'all do know that it was there before they acknowledged it. But God has kept us. Why? Because he said he would never leave us nor forsake us. He promised us that he would be there with us in spite of. How many of y'all know that we serve a in spite of God? Oh, he's a good God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So on this fifth Sunday, there is a word from the Lord. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. And you know, God does these things, and I hear other preachers say that, but every time it happens to me, I continue to be amazed. When he gives you a word, he always sends you confirmation. Amen. To God be the glory. Either he gives you confirmation or he said that ain't the one. But today he has told me that this is the one that we needed to hear on today. Amen. Why preacher? Well, because we've been studying for the last two months about the love of Christ. Amen. For those of you who have come to um, Sunday school, you know that that's where we have been. But pastor has been preaching about the love of Christ. Amen. And how important it is for us to love one another. I heard this morning about how important it is to love our neighbor. Amen. To God be the glory. So God has given me a word that actually initially came to me by way of my mother. To God be the glory. Y'all know my mother's a mighty woman of God and and she used to make notes all over. And I never realized that one day I would have to go back and look at those notes and see it in a different way. And so today, Mother did a little word um, many years ago that um, was uh, titled, um, and I've changed it around, and I've added a comp uh, ready for us today, but her word was, God is love. Amen. And as I was going around asking myself and then God, God, what must I say to your people? God be the glory. And I was cleaning out some stuff that, um, that was in the closet. How many of y'all know y'all got stuff in your closet? To God be the glory. I came across some notes that my mom had made. And the word said, say to them that God is love. Amen. To God be the glory. And so the word today is coming from John 3, 16. John 3, 16. Now, I know as preachers, we often minister to John or from John 3, 16. The title is going to be on today, um, God is Love. But I'm going to give you a subtitle. Subtitle, Who is Your Brother? And who is your neighbor? Amen? Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come before you thanking and praising you for this another day. God, I love you and I praise you, realizing, God, that I can't do anything without you, God. And so, God, I know that you're here. I felt your presence, 
and I know that the anointing is available to me, God. And so I ask, God, that you, God, that you will fill me with your spirit, God. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, I can't do it without you. In the name of Jesus, I ask you, God, that the Holy Spirit rain down upon that realizing, God, that you are welcome in this place. Omnipotent power, omnipotent Father, you are welcome in this place. In this place, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 To God be the glory. And so our scripture is coming directly from John 3, 16, but I want to share with you a few other verses. Amen. So let's go to John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son unto the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Verse 18, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of the Father. Amen. To God be the glory. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that we that we have an opportunity for everlasting life. Amen? Amen? To God be the glory. So on this fifth Sunday, we know that without God, we would be lost. As a believer, we know that we need God. And we are reminded every day as we go from our time to time, things to do, that there are things that we just couldn't do without God. Because y'all do know that we mess up. We think we got it going on. But then we forget. The older we get, the more we forget. The younger we are, we just plain don't know. But just because of God being God by himself, he knew just what we were going to need. And so what did he do? He sent his son. Huh? He sent his only son. And being his only son, it was also the best he had. How many of you know that God sent his best? He didn't send us no trash. He didn't send us something that he's just kicking out. He could have sent us that one that he kicked out, but he didn't. He sent his best. He sent his son. Amen. And so that we can say, Greater love hath no man than thee that, that a man lay down his life for a friend. We're already talking about how important it is to look for help. So we look for help, but we got to give some help. And when we give some help, we're taking care of our neighbor. Amen? You see, we must have love for our fellow man. Amen? And, 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 and we got to remember that our day will come. Pastor says it all the time. Live long enough and your day will come when you too will need somebody. Glory to God. So we know that in the second greatest commandment, it says what? Love. That brother? Love is so important. Amen. So you are, you see, and you hear. If you tell the truth, Tina Turner used to do a song called What Love Has Got to Do With It. I know y'all remember it. You can act like you don't remember it, but some of y'all are still singing it. You don't just remember it, you're still singing it. And that's all right, because love hasn't changed. That may be the secular part of it, but as a believer, come on somebody, we know how important Love is. Amen. And without love, we would be lost. Glory to God. And we know the story of Joseph and his many colors in his coat. Amen. And how it caused a problem with his brothers. Y'all remember? He was jealous. They, they were jealous. They were jealous because mama had given him something that was beautiful. And they, 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 they were jealous because their daddy seemed to love him more than them. 
Glory to God. And what did they do? They made him to end up, end up being enslaved. Huh? But what did God do, preacher? God turned around and made a bad thing good. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So when the brothers thought that they were getting rid of something, they just didn't even realize that it was one of the best things that would ever happen to them. Because the day would come that these same brothers would need their brother. Glory to God. Oh, I'm talking about the love of Christ on today. Amen. So Genesis tells us how the brothers failed. They thought they were doing something good. But love comes in a multitude of faults, huh, and sins. We start out trying to make it good, we make a mess, but because of God himself sending his son Jesus to us, he has a way of turning it all around. Y'all better come on, pray with me today. To God be the glory. So you remember that God makes no mistakes. No mistakes whatsoever. And so what he gave to us is what we really needed for such a time as then. And how many of y'all know that we're needing the same thing today? Y'all know that God knew that this pandemic was going to come. He knew because he had allowed this to happen time and time. They weren't calling it a, pan a pandemic, but we, we do know that there were, there were so many things that he allowed when people were disobedient. And y'all know that we've been disobedient. But even in, this, in the midst of our disobedience, God sent his son to remind us that if, even day, every day, every day, that he would protect us, he would keep us, amen? He would be there for us. How many of y'all been hungry since the pandemic come? That's what I'm talking about. How many of y'all been thirsty with the, th with the pandemic? That's what I'm talking about. God has taken care of his people, amen, in spite of, huh? To God be the glory. If you didn't have it, he sent somebody to provide for it. That little box that ended up on your, on, on your step, somebody sent it. You say, well, who did that? I say God sent it. God sent it by way of his son. Jesus, glory to God. Hallelujah. So church, if we loveth not, we, we know nothing about God. If we don't know God, we would be a lost people, huh? Look around with the neighbors who don't know God, struggling, struggling so much that they don't even know. They're worse than somebody who's psychiatrically in, psych in, in crisis because they don't know God. But I come before you today that we still have a responsibility you see them. We talked about it in Sunday school this morning. It is our job to help somebody. It's our responsibility. Why? Because these are our neighbors. Glory to God. And when your neighbor is down, you're down. Come on, somebody. You may not know it. You may not want to help. But the bottom line is that when your neighbor, mother, is down, you are down in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. It is our responsibility to help somebody. It is our job to help somebody. It is our every day, every day, there's an opportunity for us to help someone just because Christ imparted love in us. Amen? Little things become great things. Huh? Little things that you do become great things. It ain't about you to puff up about it or be proud about it. It's for you to say, thank you, God. Thank you, God, that you made a way out of no way for somebody through little old me. Ah, I thank God for it. I thank God for who he is in my life. I thank God because he took this wretch like me. Huh? Made something good out of me. Made me somebody that somebody might want to say first lady. Because I want to tell you, 
40 years ago, nobody would have called me First Lady. Glory to God. But I thank God today, it is greater than a title. It is an honor. To God be the glory. Oh, I thank God today. My thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. And I say that he can do the same thing for you. I don't care what you struggle with. I don't care who you think you might be that nobody wants to emulate. But God can clean you up. God can make you white as snow. He can make you. He can make you be his child. He can make you to the point where somebody would say, I want to be like her. To God be the glory. I don't know what she got, but I want some of that. Glory to God. And then you can say, you don't know my story. But let me tell you, let me tell you how I got where I am today. Let me tell you, who turned me around. mistakes just like anybody else. I ain't been perfect. But God said, if you live right, if you live right, heaven belongs to you. He said, get right with God. Let him know who you belong. Let him know that you are, you are my child. I'm going to tell you that he is my father. He's my everything. Ah, glory to God. He makes me feel good. He walks with me. He talks with me. He lets me know that I'm his child every day. When I walk into, into the job and they cuss him, they respect me, they stop. You know what they say? They say, that's Nurse Holland. Give her respect. So God will make people respect you. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. He will make children look at you and say, I want to be a nurse like her. To God be the glory. God will do it. Glory to God. Oh, he's an on-time God. Ah, and he's an on-time all. All the time. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. So God is love, church. God is the one that makes wrong right. God is the one, hallelujah, who make you want to get out of your bed in the morning. He's the one that put food on your table. He's the one who put clothes on your back. And he does it through his son, Jesus. For God is love. Because when he sent his son to us, his son taught us to love one another. Jesus teaches us even today how important it is for to treat people right. Sometimes people say, First Lady, you got to be tired. And I say, I am. But the God that I serve keeps me going. Huh? To God be the glory. And I'm telling you, he'll do the same thing for you. Sometimes I tell pastor, I'm so tired. But God. But God. God will never leave you. He will keep you. He will give you just enough sleep so that you can do what you need to do. Huh? And I tell people all the time that we're all servants. God has taught us that we're all servants. When you turn over your life with God, you, may, you have a commitment to serve him, to, to learn what's in this book, huh? so you can walk what's in this book, so you can talk what's in this book. Glory to God. To God be the glory. God is a good God. God is a good God. And finally, John 14, 23 says, if a man loves huh, me, he will keep my word and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. What does that mean? If you love God, God will turn you around so that you will get excited huh, for him, for yourself about him. Huh? You'll be excited about coming to Bible study and Sunday school. 
things that maybe you never was excited about it before. We got a young lady that I'm sure never thought that she would be teaching Sunday school, but she's teaching Sunday school now. Is she perfect? No, but God said he can use anybody. Come on, y'all. So you can do things in spite of who you look in the mirror and find yourself to be because God will clean you up, turn you Make you who he needs to be. The preacher ain't perfect. The pastor ain't perfect. But God continues to use them. So look in the mirror and find out what God wants you to do. Because you are servants and there's work to be done. We are winding up this time on this side. And we want to be ready when he calls our name. I don't know about you, but I'm living to live again. I'm asking God to allow me to live long enough. Amen. Long enough so that I will leave with somebody a part of what he has given unto me. Amen. To God be the glory. And so as a Christian, as we claim ourselves to be Christians, we don't have to try to tell them that we're perfect. We're not. But what we can tell them is that we're living for Christ. We're trying to get this thing ready. And I've got something to tell you. So all you have to tell them is, but God so loved the world, his only begotten son, he sent him just for us. Don't you want to know a little bit more about that? Amen? And it opens the door for so many. Amen? Because y'all know there are people who want to know Christ. There are some people who want to know Christ. All they're doing is waiting for an invitation, an invitation for their life to be better, an invitation for it to come out of the, out of the gutter, huh? to God be the glory, to come out, out of, of, of living on the streets, living in alleys. They want somebody to care. I believe that Sunday school said this morning, all we have to do is love somebody, and then before you know it, they want to love you back. Huh? To God be the glory. To God be the glory. And so on this Sunday morning, I'm about done. I pray that somebody has heard what I'm about to say, what I have said to you, because God is everything, and he has sent us everything. He sent his son, and all he wants us to do is share the word, teach our children, huh? help our sisters and our brothers. huh? Stop being evil. Forgive people. All those things that we are so quickly to do. Turn our own life around. Don't worry about what anybody uh, is, is watching you. You do what you're supposed to do. Huh? Huh? Come on. Come on, somebody. And even when someone has done something, has done something for you, you do what you know is right. Forgive them. Don't worry about whether they're going to receive your forgiveness. Just you do what you know you're supposed to do. Because God is watching you. God will take care of them. Amen? To God be the glory.